Hello everyone, welcome back to a new session in dentistry and more. Today's topic is gingiva. So this video covers the gingiva, its parts, its uh, fibers, uh, various functions in detail. So let's see the details of gingiva. So as per definition, gingiva it is a part of oral mucosa that covers the alveolar process of jaws and surrounds the neck of the teeth. So as we all know, it is a covering of alveolar bonds and surrounds the necks of teeth. It has got basically two parts, one is marginal gingiva and attached gingiva. Marginal gingiva is uh, a free gingiva which is not attached to the teeth. We can see just uh, around the teeth which is forming a small groove or small sulcus around the teeth that is marginal gingiva and it is also known as free gingiva because it is not attached it is free to uh, free to move or free uh, it is flexible in nature so that is marginal gingiva and the attached gingiva which is uh, attached to the underlying uh, bone so it is not uh, movable type it is firmly attached to the underlying alveolar bone and this attached gingiva and marginal gingiva which is separated by a groove known as free gingival groove. So this is the marginal gingiva, this uh, blue color and the red color is attached gingiva which is attached to the bone and this is alveolar mucosa. So marginal gingiva basically has two parts that is gingival sulcus and interdental gingiva. So this is a gingival sulcus you can see. It is a sulcus between the gingiva and teeth. So it is a V-shaped crevice which is 1.8 mm uh, basic depth that is 0 to 6 mm in range which has got crevicular fluid or GCF and the probing depth is usually 2 to 3 mm. So this is a gingiva and alveolar bone. So this is alveolar bone. So we have attached gingiva from here to here. This is alveolar mucosa. The same picture I am showing here. This is a frontal view. This is a side view. So alveolar mucosa, attached gingiva. So we have free gingiva. This is a gingival sulcus or crevicle, crevicular area. And it is uh, separated by free gingival groove or free uh, or the marginal gingival groove so from here to here it is attached gingiva which is firmly attached to the bone and from that to lower part is alveolar mucosa okay so next we have interdental gingiva so that is between the two teeth occupy gingival embrasure which is site of initial lesions which is pyramidal in uh, anterior region and flattened in posterior region which is basically scallop and presence of interdental call so there will be a valley space between the anterior posterior that is a front and back region there will be a valley space or a shallow space which is known as call and marginal gingiva which is a collar like terminal edges which is free to move which is 1.5 to 2 mm wide this is marginal gingiva and which is a sluice way in mastication and forming sulcus between tooth and gingiva okay so this is a sulcus which is formed by marginal gingiva and tooth whereas the attached gingiva which is a functional mucosa which is very firm resilient and tightly bound to alveolar mucosa which is pale and pink which is stippled stippling is a alternate protuberances seen on the gingival surface which is uh, giving it a orange peel appearances so the epithelium and connective tissue in the digitation gives that particular stipple appearance the stippling is a good sign for gingiva and if the stippling is absent there will be some pathology involved so in attached gingiva the maxillary incisal region is ranging between 3.5 to 4.5 Whereas the molar it is 1.9 mm, in, in mandibular region it is 3.3 to 3.9 and in molar mandibular 1.8 mm. 
so what are the clinical features the basic color is coral pink color coral pink means the coral reefs the pink color we have various shades of pink uh, the pink color which is seen in the coral reefs the seaside coral reefs that's why it's got uh, that peculiar name coral pink so the pink color which is seen in the coral reefs the size is 0.2 mm uh, marginal gingiva and uh, sorry 0 to 2 mm marginal gingiva and 0 to 9 mm attached gingiva contour is scalloped uh, and firm and resilient consistency and stipple texture so it is developing uh, when there is uh, oral epithelium it joins with the reduced enamel epithelium so once the enamel is laid down the epithelium which covers the tooth is known as reduced enamel epithelium which joins with oral epithelium and becoming junctional epithelium so this is a junctional epithelium so this is a tooth and the oral epithelium and junction uh, reduced enamel epithelium which is present here become junctional epithelium and we have another type of epithelium which is known as circular epithelium which is seen in the gingival crevice and also oral epithelium that is a epithelium which covers the outer surface of gingiva so that is oral epithelium then the circular epithelium and junctional epithelium junctional epithelium is fusion of reduced enamel epithelium which was present on the enamel surface after the tooth formation which joins with the oral epithelium becoming junctional epithelium so that's about the basic introduction part its classification marginal and attached gingiva gingival sulcus and endodental gingiva so now let's see the various uh, epithelium that is oral, circular and junctional epithelium of gingiva. So moving on to the various uh, epithelial types in gingiva, the oral epithelium, circular epithelium and junctional epithelium. So this is a junctional epithelium, uh, circular epithelium and the oral epithelium. So oral epithelium is keratinized. Keratinized means we have four layers of epithelium in common. The stratum basilis, stratum spinosum, stratum granulosum and stratum corneum. So the level of keratinization increases as it goes higher. The basal layer has uh, cell multiplication and as it goes higher there is more of keratinization happens. So oral epithelium is basically keratinized and stratified in nature and it is also a squamous type. So it has basically uh, three types of keratinization. One is parakeratinized which has got 75% of total oral epithelium. And the orthokeratinized is 15% and non-keratinized is 10%. Uh, and there are various cells of epithelium present. The difference between parakeratinized and orthokeratinized it is a level of keratinization uh, basically orthokeratinized is the least common form of epithelium found in oral cavity uh, which is associated with masticatory mucosa of hard palate and attached gingiva and uh, the parakeratinized is the most common one and parakeratinized is most commonly associated with um, the masticatory surfaces and we have various cells of epithelium so before that uh, we need to know the basic structure of epithelium at basal layer we have stratum basal layer where the cell production is happening then stratum spinosum and stratum granulosum and the top layer is stratum corneum where the complete keratinization happens so level of keratinization is increasing as it goes higher at the basal layer uh, the cell multiplication and cell genesis production of cells happening at stratum basal layer so the organelles uh, and the multiplication mitosis feature and all are present at the deeper layers as it goes uh, at the topper layers it becomes more keratinized and nuclei and other organelles will be lost and it will be uh, completely keratinized so we have uh, cells of epithelium that is keratinocytes and non-keratinocytes non-keratinocytes is also known as clear cells okay so we have keratinocytes which produces keratin and non-keratinocytes which has other functions also known as clear cell. So we have three types of non-keratinocytes in oral cavity, melanocytes, Langerhans cells and Merkel cell. So these are very important commonly asked short notes in exam. 
what is melanocyte what is langerhans cell and merkel cell langerhans cell so we had already covered previously uh, so we have one more cell which is langerhans cells that is different that is seen in uh, pathology tuberculosis is langerhans cells so uh, never get confused langerhans and langerhans cells this is langerhans cells so the first one is merkel cell merkel cell is nothing but which is located in the deeper layer of epithelium and they harbor nerve endings and these are connected to adjacent cell by desmosomes and they have been identified as uh, tactile perceptors so these are tactile perceptors which is present in the deeper cells and the next one is uh, Lang langerhans cells which are dendritic cells located among keratinocytes at all supra basal layer so near the topper layer it is present langerhans cells which are the dendritic cells and uh, they belong to the mononuclear phagocyte system uh, or also known as these are the reticulo endothelial system so it belongs to the reticulo endothelial system and which contain elongated granules and are considered macrophages uh, as macrophages with possible mm, antigenic properties so it has antigenic properties which involves with the mm, immunity that is mononuclear phagocytes and the next one is melanocytes which are basically uh, involved in melanin production then they are dendritic cells uh, located in basal and spinous layers which involve in synthesis of melanin in organelles that is pre melanosomes or melanosomes these organelles which contain tyrosinase that hydrolates uh, hydroxylates so there will be tyrosinase enzymes in these organelles that is melanosomes or pre melanosomes so this uh, enzyme which convert tyrosine to dopa that is dihydroxyphenylalanine uh, phenylalanine will be produced which uh, in turn is progressively converted to melanin so the melanin will be synthesized in organelles that is pre melanosomes or melanosomes which contain an enzyme known as tyrosinase which hydroxylates tyrosine to dopa dihydroxyphenylalanine which in turn progressively converted to melanin so melanin granules uh, are phagocytosed and contained within other cells of epithelium and connective tissue so it can be seen in other cells of epithelium and connective tissue they are called melanophages or melanophores so melanophages or melanophores are uh, melanin granules which are phagocytosed and contained within various epithelium and connective tissue so these are the basic uh, cells of gingiva uh, these are the non keratinocytes it has two types one is keratinocyte and non keratinocyte or clear cell melanocytes langerhans cells and merkel cell so melanocytes are involved in melanin production langerhans cells has antigenic property merkel cell is for tactile perceptors is commonly as short nodes uh, gingival epithelium so now we'll see circular and junctional epithelium so in circular epithelium so circular epithelium is the this section the blue color okay so this is the orange color is the gingival epithelium this blue is circular epithelium and this black one which is starting from the cemento enamel junction till here is a junctional epithelium okay so gingival epithelium we already covered now we are in circular epithelium circular epithelium which lines the gingival sulcus so this is a gingival sulcus so it lines the gingival sulcus and it is a thin non keratinized stratified squamous epithelium without any root apex okay so it doesn't have any root apex in it so it is basically without any retapex 
and it extends from the coronal limit of junctional epithelium to the crest of gingival margin okay so this is the junctional epithelium and its coronal end so it ex it starts from coronal end of junctional epithelium to the crest of gingival margin so this is the gingival margin to the crest of gingival margin to the coronal end this is the apical end this is the coronal end coronal end of junctional epithelium to the crest of gingival margin okay it is a semi permeable membrane and it shows uh, many cells with uh, hydropic degeneration and uh, unlike the junctional epithelium the circular epithelium is not heavily infiltrated with pmn that is uh, cells which is involved in inflammatory uh, process so it is not very common in circular epithelium so these uh, polymorphonuclear cells which are not uh, very much infiltrated in circular epithelium but whereas in junctional epithelium is highly infiltrated and and it appears to be less permeable in nature whereas the junctional epithelium it is consists of a collar like band of stratified squamous non keratinized epithelium so okay the length of junctional epithelium from 0.25 to 1.35 millimeter and it is 3 to 4 layer at the beginning and as age age goes uh, as a person ages it reaches up to 10 to 20 layers so we have seen it is formed by oral epithelium and reduced enamel epithelium okay so the part of oral epithelium and after tooth formation there is something called reduced enamel epithelium here so it is joined by formed by the combination of reduced enamel epithelium and oral epithelium so it is formed by uh, confluence of these two epithelium and junctional epithelium is attached to two surface by something known as epithelial attachment and internal basal lamina so this is called internal basal lamina so this is attached to the two surface here attached to the two surface by internal basal lamina which is a epithelial attachment and it is attached to the gingival connective tissue by a external basal lamina okay so to the tooth surface it is attached by internal basal lamina and it is attached to the gingival connective tissue by an external basal lamina so internal basal lamina and also there is something known as external basal lamina so external basal lamina so external basal lamina the junctional epithelium is attached to the gingival connective tissue whereas internal basal lamina is junctional epithelial attachment to the tooth surface okay and the attachment of junctional epithelium to the tooth is reinforced by the gingival fibers so, so there will be gingival reinforcement so gingival reinforcement so no gingival reinforcement will be there so this is external basal lamina here internal basal lamina here and gingival fibers reinforces it which brace the marginal gingiva against the tooth surface okay for this reason the junctional epithelium and gingival fibers collectively known as dendro gingival unit it is a functional unit okay so gingival fibers and the junctional epithelium collectively known as dendro gingival unit which is a functional unit now let's see the functions of junctional epithelium junctional epithelium firmly attached to the tooth surface we know by internal basal lamina which forms an epithelial barrier against the plaque bacteria okay so it act as a protective barrier against the plaque bacteria and also it allows access of gingival fluid inflammatory cells and components of the immunologic host defense to the gingival margin so from the gingiva 
inflammatory cells will be excited to the it is a as we discussed it is highly infiltrated with polymorpho nuclear cells so there will be access of gingival fluid inflammatory cells and components of immunological defense mechanism through the to the gingival margin and junction epithelial cells exhibit a rapid turnover rate which contributes to the host parasite equilibrium and rapid repair of damaged tissues so it has basically three functions one is rapid turnover rate which helps for uh, repairing damaged tissues and immune defense there will be infiltrate coming from the fluid to the gingival margin and it act as a barrier against black bacteria mm -hmm.